part of pretty much any first year course in linear algebra will involve the operations projection or cross product. And I think students understand these operations pretty well. So if I take the operation projection, for example, I take two vectors and I have one vector which defines the operation and another vector which is the input to that operation. Then I have the projection, which is in this case, the projection of the vector B onto the vector A, which gives you this, this um, vector somewhere along this line, which uh, is between this, the tail of the vector and closest to B like this. So it defines, if you like, a, a right angle triangle using this vector and whatever other sides are required where one side is along this line. And the, the projection is a lovely, a lovely operation. We also have the cross product, which is another one, another operation that I think students understand pretty well, is geometrically just a vector which points out perpendicular to both these objects. And the arithmetic of the projection and the cross product are familiar, but what is, uh, what is sometimes difficult is knowing how to put these operations together to solve a problem. And a fairly standard problem in vector geometry is to define the shortest distance between a plane and a point. So if we just visualize what the problem is, here I have a point and here it's on the plane, so we might say it has distance zero. If I put it down here, then it's off the plane and has, a, has some large distance away from it, and here it's kind of close to the plane. But how can we use these operations and string them together to actually answer a question? Well, it's a two-step process. You first of all start with the normal. So here I have a, a copy of the, the normal vector, and you need another vector which goes from, from somewhere on the plane. It doesn't matter where, but let's, uh, let's just pick this point over here. And you take the projection. So you've, you've already got the cross product and you've computed the, you've computed the normal of that. And you use that as the, as the base of your projection to define the projection operation. And then you put that other vector in there. And you put that somewhere on the plane and you put the tip of your vector on the point you're looking for. And then this, the length of the projection gives you the distance from the plane to the point. Now, I, let me just demonstrate that that's actually true. If I take that vector, I have to put all my bits right in, back where they belong. That one goes there, that one goes there. If I take my vector and you can see if I just overlay that thus, this point here on the plane is the plane, is the point directly beneath so let's go and have a look. Is the point directly beneath? No, we can look up at it like this. Uh, directly beneath the point which lies on the plane. And if I redefine the plane somewhat like that, so bring it nice and close, I'll take my point and I put it there. You can see that this this vector here is the vector which takes you from the plane to the point, or the shortest vector which takes you from the plane to the point. And its length, well, I just look at this vector over here. It's the length of this projection, this yellow vector, which is in this case 1.86. So it's really just using these elementary operations, the cross product and the projection, and stringing them together in a particular way, which will allow you to answer some, some non-trivial uh, questions in vector geometry, such as finding the shortest distance between a point and a plane.